This is the OSCII Tone Scout. The Scout is a beginner-friendly DIY synthesizer with a 3D printed enclosure that you can make yourself. Sounds pretty cool, right? The OSCII Tone Scout is a DIY synthesizer, and if you're interested in synthesizers and 3D printing, it is an awesome project that is perfect for you. The level of detail on the Scout's GitHub page is absolutely top-notch, and it has everything from exploded diagrams of how the mechanical parts fit together, as well as an assembly guide that has detailed troubleshooting steps if something should go wrong. This isn't the first release from Oscitone, and they've really nailed down this documentation process. The Scout is actually my third Oscitone keyboard. The first was the OK2. The OK2 is a two-octave monophonic synth driven by a square wave oscillator, and each key is controlled by its own individually tuned trim pot. It's fun, but it's a little bit of an undertaking to get it wired up. My second Oscitone is the Poly555, and if this thing looks complicated, that's because it is. Each key is actually wired to its own oscillator, so it's technically polyphonic in kind of a weird way, but it was a beast to assemble. By comparison, the Scout is meant to look simple and sound simple. Here, listen to how cute it is. Soldering the Oscitone Scout is easy. I mean really easy like first electronics soldering project ever easy. It's designed to be really straightforward, and the way the instructions are written, there's a pause after each step to verify if everything you've done so far is correct. So for instance, after you've soldered the first few components in place, there's a pause to verify whether or not power is being sent from the switch to the LED. This might seem trivial, but it's a great way to verify a few things. First, that your batteries are wired up correctly, your switch is wired up correctly, and the resistor and LED are wired up as well. By flipping that switch, you can verify that those components are functioning as intended and you're ready to move on to the next step. The rest of the soldering continues in this fashion. So for instance, after you add the headphone jack, you can plug in some headphones and wire up a single switch and see if it works. It took me well under an hour and a half to do all of the soldering on the Scout, and that includes all the time I had to spend setting up the camera. So overall, it's really easy to get this thing set up and running, and I love that you can test the functionality as you go, so you don't get to the very end and wonder, how come it's not making noise? It's a pretty minor detail, but the battery enclosure is probably one of the coolest under the radar parts of this entire project. It's got a couple of springs that are snap fits, so the whole thing just feels really satisfying when you put it together, and it holds the batteries perfectly. It's one of those things that you don't think a whole lot about typically until you've printed one of these little modules and seen how much care went into actually getting everything perfect so you can assemble it without any problems. With the electronics out of the way, now it's time to 3D print the case for our Scout, and this brings us to today's sponsor. It's me! Well, it, it's Resin Labs. Are you tired of making time-lapse videos with your resin 3D printer that look boring and just go up and down? Try Resin Labs. Resin Labs is an easy way to make silky smooth time-lapses using only a Canon camera and your favorite resin 3D printer. You can find all the information about the Resin Labs and some cool videos made by Uncle Jesse on how to use it in the description below. Okay, back to the video. Here you can see the bottom of the enclosure. I printed this out using Soraya Tech's Simple Clear Resin because I wanted a translucent enclosure, and it came out really great. I printed it at a bit of an angle because I wanted the support structure to only be touching the back of the model. I figured it would be a little bit easier to break away so I didn't have to worry about snapping it off, and I didn't want to worry about the part warping if I printed it entirely flat. I used the Mercury X Wash and Cure Station by Elegoo for this part. It's the perfect size because it's designed to work with the Elegoo Mars and Saturn. And you can see here, once the part finished, it's translucent-ish, you can kind of see through it, but you can really see all those dimples from where the support structure touched the model. This was pretty easy to fix, I just gave it a quick wet sand with 1500 grit sandpaper, and just a couple of passes got it looking pretty good, and you can see that increased the transparency quite a bit. It's still not quite where I'd want it to be, so a quick clear coat really helps out to make this part as transparent as possible. I went back and forth and repeated this process a few times, so clear coat, sand, clear coat, sand, and the final product looks pretty transparent. I'm really happy with how it looks and how you can see the circuit board through the model, so from here it's time to start putting it together. On the top cover there are two captive nuts that need to be inserted, and this is a little bit of a challenge. The resin is brittle, but it's also a friction fit, so I just moved really slow here. 
The keys for the Scout are also really cleverly designed. They're made to be a two-color print, so just like piano keys, we're going to print them in white and black, and this can be accomplished by pausing the print, swapping colors, and then resuming. This means in one print, we're able to print all the white and the black keys, and they're all attached to that same central bar, which is used as a springboard to allow them to articulate up and down. It's really clever stuff. Once the keys are printed, we have all the parts we need to fully assemble the Scout. We're just going to add the keys, the spacer, and the volume knob to the top, and we're good to go. Overall, I'm thrilled with the level of transparency I was able to achieve. I can see through the model, I can see all of the electronic components, I can see the wires, the battery pack. It's all visible, and it looks really cool. It's just a very interesting piece, and the fact that it was 3D printed makes it a little bit cooler. The one thing that I noticed all across the model was this crazing, and you can see it all across the top. Crazing tends to occur to materials that are exposed to either stress or heat, both of which this material was exposed to during the printing process. It doesn't have an effect on the model as is, but it may be prone to wearing out faster over time. Okay, so let's actually hear this thing. It's adorable. The OSCII Tone is fully open source, so if you want to build or buy one yourself, you can find a link in the description to the OSCII Tone site, where you can either download the 3D printable files, or you can buy a kit that comes ready to assemble. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing.